Breaking news uh, just coming in. It looks like Democrat Janet Mills has won the governor's race in Maine. That was one uh, where we had we didn't have an answer, but it looks like that is official now. Um, that race is being called. Janet Mills, again, a uh, Democrat, winning the governor's race in Maine. So uh, that's another put, put that in the win column for the Democrats. Uh, also, though not a Women on Wednesday story, uh, Democrat John Tester also uh, in breaking news now winning the reelection uh, for his seat in Montana. He is uh, the Democratic senator, of course, there. So um, that was another one that we were uh, waiting to get the results on. So results still coming in in a lot of uh, places where uh, absentee ballots have to be counted. Things are close. Um, and, and uh, you know, we're still we're still waiting on some of these things. Uh, but including here in Georgia and in Florida, also a lot of controversy. I don't think Florida ever goes uh, and, uh, through an election without controversy. What are they doing down there? Uh, Bill Nelson, the Democrat in Florida, now has officially, as of this morning, asked for that recount. He has said, um, and he has a right to, the rules in Florida, and every state has their own rules, but the rules in Florida are are that if the um, results are within a 5% margin, then a recount is automatic. So it's not a runoff, it's a recount. And that is where they are because they were only uh, the two of them were only four percent apart, according to uh, the numbers that I saw and that I guess Bill Nelson is seeing as well. But uh, his opponent actually disagreeing and saying he won. So we'll see what happens there. We don't know yet from the secretary of state in Florida whether or not there will be a recount uh, of that election. But uh, a couple other interesting races in Florida. Uh, a couple, uh, I think the Republican Curbelo, who we were talking about over the last several days, lost his race to his Democratic challenger. Uh, of course, Andrew Gillum, who was definitely in the national uh, eye and the national news, lost his uh, bid for the governorship there. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of interesting races around the country. But uh, it is Women on Wednesday, so I specifically uh, want to talk about how women have done this year and You know, in 1992, which was uh, right around the Anita Hill hearings, it was the year after that next election, after the Anita Hill uh, issue with Clarence Thomas in the Supreme Court, they called 1992 the year of the woman. And by comparison, this is like the year of the woman on steroids. This is like the year, really the year. No, no, really, this one is the year of the woman. You know, I think they thought after 1992, you know, that we would see this, you know, ongoing influx of women into politics uh, and and into the boardrooms and the C-suite, you know, across the country, this was going to be the start of something. And while perhaps it was, it's been very slow moving. I think in many ways, the, you know, President Trump being elected is, is, was the start of the era of the woman. Um, We, Obviously saw women march in massive numbers in January of 2017. And then we saw women uh, run for office. So they marched and then they ran. See what I did there? Uh, Then they ran for office uh, this year in numbers that we have never seen before. And over 100 uh, women now uh, will be going to Washington uh, as elected officials. And so that is really uh, quite phenomenal. There's never been more than 84, I believe, total at any one time, and now there will be over 100. So that's a pretty uh, a pretty important number. That said, there's also uh, more, I think, women governors than ever before. Um, and by the way, some of the women that have been elected are on the Republican side. They're not all Democrats, although they are predominantly Democrat. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this is it's while it is a win, it is a – we should look at it as the beginning of – let's go with the sports analogy. Watch me hurt myself here. Um, We should think of this as the beginning of the season, not the end. This isn't the Super Bowl. It was like game two, you know, because while 100 women going to Washington as elected officials is amazing, it is not even remotely uh, representative of the population. So women are about 51, 52 percent of the population, and there are 435 members of the House and, you know, 100 Congress people, senators and and House, I believe, total is the number. And so we're talking about less than a quarter uh, of the elected officials still female. Now, it's way better than it has been, but we should get to a place where the numbers of people of 
that that the population in our Congress is representative of the population of our country in terms of race, uh, gender identity, uh, sexual preference, religion, all of that. We should have a governing body that truly is as close as possible to a microcosm of our country. They should look like we do. And we're not there yet. Um, we're still being primarily governed by a group of old white men. Um, that is the reality. So I hope we get beyond that, but I think we are on the right track. I was having a text conversation with my daughter, actually, this morning about some of the election results. And um, she was saying, you know, we can't, that she wishes it had been different and there had been some other winners along the way in some of these races. But this is not the time to say, okay, well, we did what we could. Eh, we're done. No, this is the beginning. It's game two. So, you know, maybe game three is whatever runoffs we have and game four is 2020 and game five is, you know, the next set of, of midterms after that because we're not close to the finish line here.